Hello, this is Khurram Nasir and you are watching Optometry with Khurram. And today's topic, today's comment is from Ms. Ishma and she is concerned that what is actually the concave mirror effect and why we used concave mirror effect. So in this video, we are going to learn about, in this lecture, we are going to learn about uh, what, the, what is the plane mirror effect, the, what is the concave mirror effect, what are the similarities, what are the difference between these two effects of retinoscope, right? You know very well that in the previous video, we have discussed different important parts of the retinoscope right and that what is actually the construction of the retinoscope but in this video we are going to learn about the details of the two different effects of retinoscope like the one is the plane mirror effect another one is the concave mirror effect you know very well that we have different types of retinoscopy different types of retinoscopes in this era and in some kinds of retinoscope in which the lens is fixed so let's draw a simple optics of the retinoscope. Suppose this is retinoscope and this is, you know, very well, a light source, a bulb, right? And you know very well about the sleeve of the retinoscope, right? In the previous video, we have dis discussed about the different parts of the retinoscope uh, of the Heine from the German. And uh, you know very well the sleeve. Whenever we pull the sleeve up or down, it will change it, it it will switch the effect of the retinoscope right so in this type of retinoscope this is the bulb or the light source and this bulb is fixed right sorry this this lens is movable actually right this lens can move them and the sleeve is down right and when we put the sleeve down the bulb will go down right and the condensing lens is fixed as we discussed that the lens is fixed so condensing lens will be stay at there this is condensing lens and the effective sleeve down we pull the sleeve down and the bulb can move so the bulb by putting the sleeve down the bulb go down like this and there will be a greater distance between the condensing lens and the bulb right you know very well that what is the condensing lens condensing lens is actually the high plus power and what you know very well that property of the condensing lens or the plus lens or the characteristic of the plus lens is to converge the light rays the converging is actually the property is actually the function is actually the characteristic of the condensing lens it will converge the light rays it will concentrate the light rays right at a specific point so number three is a mirror so whenever light will go like this it will strike the mirror you know very well let me explain with an example you have observed many people many press bio people which put his or her glasses at the tip of their nose and they look like this if, if they want to see at the distance they use their eyes and if they want to study or you want to use his or her mobile they look through the glasses so you can see very well that there is a big difference between the eyes and the lens and whenever there is a big difference between the lens and the eyes the converging power will be more right so that's why the press biope will always prefer to put their spectacles at the tip of their nose right because it always increase the effective power and what is effective power the effective power of the plus lens is converging right so in this case as you can see that the different distance between the bulb and the condensing lens is greater so the converging effect will be increased right so the light rays will they will converge at a specific point and when all the light rays will converge at a specific point, they will go give concave mirror effect. Because the function of the concave mirror is converging. And if we talk about the opposite of this, the converging or you can say the concave lens, it diverge the light rays, but concave mirror will always converge the light rays. So all the light rays are converging at a specific point. So it is giving actually the concave mirror effect. There is no any concave mirror. 
but it is giving just the effect of con concavity right so all the light rays are converging at a specific point so it is giving actually the concave mirror effect right and next the same in which the retinoscope in which the lens is fixed again right let's make another optics a simple optics of the retinoscope again this is a light source but in this case the sleeve is moving upward right and when the sleeve will go up right the bulb will go up because the bulb is movable but the condensing lens is fixed and when we pull the sleeve up it will go near to the condensing lens so there is almost no difference or no distance between the light source and the bulb so you know very well in opposite to this whenever there is no any difference no any distance between the light source and the lens there will be less converging and when there is less converging there will be more diverging so all the light rays we have a mirror so all the light rays will go here and they diverge like this and it will give plane mirror effect because in plane mirror effect the light rays will go divergent or it will go parallel right so this there is a difference between the concave mirror effect and plane mirror effect in which in which type of retroscope in which the lens or the condensing lens is fixed right and this happens this happens in which the condensing lens is fixed and the light source is movable it is in the coplan type of retinoscopy but in this era we are actually using uh, the heine the german retinoscope we are using welch align we are using keelers and these retinoscopes has some different but now in previous session the lens was fixed but now the bulb is fixed so again this is retinoscope this is bulb so now this bulb is fixed this is not movable this is fixed but the condensing lens is movable now we can move the condensing lens up by pushing the sleeve up right we can move the condensing lens down by pushing the sleeve down right so in this case we are moving actually the sleeve up first so whenever we moving the sleeve up the condensing lens will go up so you can see there is a big difference there is a big distance between light source and the condensing lens and you know very well that when there is a big difference big distance between the condensing lens and the bulb there will be more converging you know very well right so we have mirror and what is the function of the mirror it will reflect all the light rays so light rays will go here and it will convert the light rays at a specific point like this and it will give concave mirror effect remember whenever there is distance between the bulb and the condensing lens the more the distance the more the converging effect right so it is concave mirror effect it will generate the concave mirror effect and now again what if we pull the sleeve down so we have light source right which is fixed which is not movable and we are moving the sleeve down now we are moving the sleeve down so when whenever we moving the sleeve down actually we are moving the condensing lens down so condensing lens will go closer to the light source so actually there is no any distance no any difference between the condensing lens and the bulb 
we have mirror so light rays will strike the mirror after passing through the condensing lens and you know very well that the, the distance between the bulb and the condensing lens is less so there will be more diverging so light rays will go diverge like this and it will give plane mirror effect right so the retinoscopes in which the bulb is fixed and the condensing lens is movable these are the keelers the hiney and the welch aligned retinoscope right and in contrast the retinoscope in which the lens is fixed right and the bulb is movable these are copland type of retinoscope right we are not using copland right now in this era in this century but we are using these retinoscope we are using keelers we are using hiney we are using welch align right i am personally using the hiney retinoscope right so that was all about the plane mirror effect and the concave mirror effect in different types of retinoscopes so the question was that why why we should go for the concave mirror effect if we have already the plane mirror effect so the reason is very simple in plane mirror effect you know very well the lights are diverge the light rods parallel right so if you have if your patient has uh, the smaller uh, degree of uh, refractive errors you can go for the plane mirror effect right but the reason number one that why should you go for the concave mirror effect the reason number one is if you got uh, the high refractive errors like you have minus 10 minus 9 minus 8 or above that above the 10 you will go for the concave mirror effect why you know very well the higher the refractive error the motion of the reflex will be more slow sluggish right so sometimes you are unable uh, to observe that either it is a with movement or it is a against movement it is very difficult to find that either it is a with or against movement so in that case you will go for concave mirror effect number one if the refractive error is high you will go for the concave mirror effect because the light will be converged and the reflex clarity will be increased right number two if you find uh, that the refractive error is high or if you are confused that either it is with or against moment you are not going to judge it properly then you can go for the concave mirror effect right so i hope this is clear all of you we'll see you in the next video of the retinoscopy see you